Okay, welcome to this week's uh, HCC chart review. Today we are going to be looking at diabetes. And before we get into it, I just want to, uh, I want, you know, I had um, posted on LinkedIn. I had made a post about the uh, the HCC changes uh, desk reference, and uh, so somebody had commented. Is there some kind of HCC quality or other impact gained by clarifying CKD 3A versus 3B? Okay. And so first I want to say that, uh, you know, this kind of discussion is really good. You know, this is, uh, you, you know, um, this is how we evolve to be better. You know, oops, sorry about that. I uh, accidentally, I hit my touchpad on my computer. Um, and so, you know, discussion is discussion and, and, and synergy is, I think, really, really, really a big part of, of what we do, you know? So, uh, so is there some kind of HCC quality or other impact gained by clarifying CKD versus, uh, 3A versus 3B? So, uh, it was funny. So I answered, I, I initially answered, I was like, I said, one way to look at this may be there was some, uh, was there some kind of HCC? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the addition of several ICD-10 codes uh, for AFib in ICD-10 when there was a single code in ICD-9, right? So, so we've got the specificity. So if specificity is a, um, you know, is, is an element of uh icd-10 and remember uh you know i mean coding 101 is you always code to the highest level of specificity so you know the the, the ten thousand foot answer is well uh you know it's simply following guidelines you know i mean you know it, it, not simply it's 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 you know just foundation just basics is you're following the guidelines of coding to the highest level of specificity right um so, you know, there were, there were uh, you know, there was one ICD-10 code for AFib in ICD-10. Now there's, uh, and ICD-9, I'm sorry, there was one. And now there's four or five in ICD-10. Uh, laterality, you know, does, 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 you know, is there some kind of ACC quality or other impact gained by clarifying whether it was the right arm or left arm that was fractured? Mm, maybe not, but... You know that it, it, we shouldn't get that granular about. Well, why do it? You know what I mean. So, um, so you know the it, you know my my answer was not really not in, in the overwhelming majority of instances. You know, uh, if the provider documented CKD three and not whether it was A or B, um, there may not necessarily be an HCC quality or other impact gain by clarifying. But it would be the right thing to do. <laughs> so, and 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 then you know, and and I'll, and I'll I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, you know, of course, the first line answer may it's just complying with the edict of the highest level of specificity. You know, the rationale may be that complete and accurate uh, may have an impact beyond a role or circumstance that one is involved in. And, you know, so it's not just about what you are doing at that moment, but it's you know, the guidelines are in place, not for a specific role it's it's for the 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 total outcome right so uh another consideration that is is that today it may not tomorrow it may you know and again that's that's why we have these guidelines and we're not looking at them as you know i have my nose in this chart right now and how does this impact me you know it's it's you know the guidelines are in place um, for, you know, uh, the universe of, uh, of possibilities and outcomes and stakeholders, et cetera. So, um, you know, so that goes back to, well, follow the guidelines and you're going to be okay. Right. Uh, if the clarity is built on a vague foundation, then it could create an issue down the road where if it was, you know, if, if we followed that edict of, you know, uh, highest level of specificity, if we followed that guideline from the start at some point down the road where it does become, uh, you know, uh, it, you know, a, a focus, whether it was clarified or not, well, we followed guidelines and now we are, we're not, we're not backtracking. We're not at, at a deficit because we didn't follow the guidelines initially, et cetera. 
Um, so, you know, and, and CKD, uh, it, it's interesting they asked about CKD because CKD originally risk adjusted, then it was, then it was removed, then it came back. So just that moving target says, you know, uh, you know, is, is indicative of it, it being exactly that a moving target. So, so again, if we follow the guidelines, um, then we are covered and we're not the culprit for something down the road. Um, then, you know, I started to think about it and, and I, so I added to it, you know, uh, and again, this is, you know, from a CDI perspective, um, or from a data mining perspective, um, you know, uh, the 3A and 3B, um, you know, 3A is a bit milder than, uh, 3B. And so, you know, you know, why is it not CKD one? Because the CKD has progressed, right? Uh, why is it not CKD two? Because the CKD has progressed, right? So, from a data mining perspective or a clinical indicator perspective, it would help the health health plan know, you know, um, you know, it would help them in their data analytics, uh, you know. Um, Predictive modeling is is is, is a uh, you know a an essential part of risk adjustment. Now, predictive modeling is you know I, I'm and I'm using the word predictive. You know I'm, I'm highlighting the word predictive because predictive predictive modeling is you know forecasting future costs based on you know current status. But um, but uh, you know if a patient has uh, you know if a patient has uh, you know early onset dementia, it's reasonable that that's not going to improve and it's only going to decline and get worse, right? So so there are there, there's many other reasons as you are sitting there coding, there's many other reasons why you would want to, you know, aside from, you know, C, C, C condition assigned code, you know, there's many other reasons why you want to make sure you stick to guidelines okay um you know if you stick to guidelines uh you're always going to be covered right so i just wanted to share that um you know something that that, that came up so uh re real quick i want to take a look at um you know we're, we are in a blended model uh v24 is going away v28 is coming in and so i like to just highlight uh you know different the, the, the differences between the two so V24, there's 429 ICD-10-CM codes in three HCCs in diabetes. Uh, HCC-17 has 23 uh, ICD-10 codes. HCC-18 has 400 uh, ICD-10 codes currently, and HCC-19 has six. Let's take a look. Okay, so now there's 344. Okay, so where were we at? Uh, we were at 420, uh, 429, okay? And now we're at uh, 344, uh, slightly less, you know, around 80, uh, around a difference around 75 to 80. Um, but there are now four HCC categories, okay? Um, and, you know, so uh, the new one is pancreas transplant status, okay? So, and that only has one code in it. <laughs> Can you guess what it is? Um, so HCC 35, remember all the HCCs have been renumbered with the exception of the first three. So, um, you know, uh, remember 17, 18, and 19? 17, 18, and 19 in V28 will be in the cancer in neoplasm uh, hierarchy. So uh, in V28, uh, we have four HCCs, 35, 36, 37, 38. Uh, HCC 35 has one code in it, pancreas transplant status. Uh, diabetes with severe acute complications and with uh, chronic complications. This nomenclature didn't change that much. Uh, you know, they put severe in acute complications uh, and, and uh, diabetes with chronic complications remains the same. And then uh, the uh, diabetes without complication has been kind of renamed to diabetes of glycemic, unspecified, or no complications. Okay. So just a couple of added clarifying terms there. So, uh, so uh, 
acute complications, 18 codes. And what do we have? We had um, uh, 23 in, uh, in V24. Uh, diabetes of chronic complications, we have 308 instead of 400. And uh, and in the, uh, let's just say uncomplicated, we have 17 codes versus six. Okay, so, uh, and uh, you, if you're attending, um, if you're attending chart review, uh, there's a good chance you have access to the uh, the uh, desk reference that we created, and it has all of the changes in it for you. Okay, so uh, just some things to note uh, in regards to the transition from V24 to V28. Okay, and you know, I, 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 there's many things that I could say, but you know, uh, you know that we cover that in the uh, the, the actual um, you know uh, 2024 HCC changes program. Uh, but just note pancreas transplant status. Okay, of course that would have risk adjusted. Uh, it would have just been in another hierarchy. It would have been in another condition category. And now uh, many of the transplants are, have been moved into what, the 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 organ system, the appropriate organ system um, for uh, for the uh, for the transplant. Okay. So um, I want to take a look at, and, and, and this is really important, folks, uh, and, and let me, um, uh, and I will be, I'll be putting this in the, uh, the, the right now uh, in today's section uh, in the system uh, is just the chart. Uh, of course, after the presentation will be uh, the presentation PDF and, and the recording. Um, but one thing I want you to take a look at is uh let me unpause my screen here um you know it, it, if you're going to be an hcc coder and 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 by the way you know if you code a chart from a face-to-face -face encounter between a patient and a medical provider and that uh, medical provider doesn't have to be an md it could be an np a pa you know do uh dpm whatever okay um you are an ACC coder, regardless, you know, there, there's people sitting in medical PCP offices across this country who say, I don't want to be an HCC coder. Well, you are an HCC coder. If you're coding those charts, you are an HCC coder. So uh, some Medicare Advantage companies leverage chart reviews and health risk assessments to disproportionately drive payments, okay? Now that all that does sound uh, somewhat uh, somewhat sinister. Um, it makes it it makes it sound as if it was intentional. Uh, you know, saying leveraged chart reviews, okay, um, which would make it sound like they went out intending to do this, which can't be excluded. OK, but the other the the other part of it is carelessness. OK, and I think there's a big distinction between um, intentionally doing something. I mean, if you intentionally run your car into a brick wall, that's one thing. If you lose control of your car accidentally and hit a brick wall, that's another. They're two different scenarios. Right. So um, but both are going to have a bad, out bad outcome. So. So uh, I'm going to be putting this in uh, several places. It'll be in the essential resources. It'll be in 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 the uh, chart review uh, resources, etc. But I, so I, I bring this up to point out that regardless of whether it's intentional or unintentional, okay, uh, disproportionate payments, errors, a uh, payment errors, okay, and this is a very very critical uh critical um you know uh topic <laughs> um you know right now there's a bill in congress that is, is that if it's if it's approved if it, if it becomes law it will uh prohibit chart reviews and that's because of the abuse that has gone on um in risk adjustment uh for the 20 years that it's existed okay so uh so that brings me to my next uh next slide here 
Okay. And we, we look at these every week. Okay. For the particular topic that we are reviewing. Okay. Because it's really important. It's really important. If, if you only view your role as read a chart, assign a code, move on. Okay. Um, you may want to just evolve your thinking a little bit, okay? I, I urge you to to try and 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 think on a broader scale because, you know, um, a I think we all know that coding is not exactly black and white, cut and dry. There are instances, you know, um, and and there there are instances where it does it does involve some contemplation some thought uh, some decision making etc and i call this kind of reverse engineering if you know what the bad outcomes have been uh you know if you know what the errors have been it is much easier to uh avoid making them you know so so i really encourage you to 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 really um you know the, these these uh these OIG Rad V reports and this is serious business, folks. This is this is the fact checking of your work after the fact. Okay, and or, you know, uh, and when I say your, I mean yours collectively. I don't mean anybody individually, but but you know, but <laughs> it does it does come down to an individual somewhere, some way, somehow, right? So uh, let's just take a look at a couple of these. Uh, for a beneficiary, Excellus submitted the diagnosis code for diabetes without mention of complication, type 2, run specified type, and not stated as uncontrolled. And so uh, some of you may be rolling your eyes and saying, what is that? If you, if you never worked in ICD-9, if you did, you might be saying, oh, you know, my, my God, what is this? You know, why, why, why are we talking about a, a, a code descriptor from eight years ago? Um. One thing you have to understand about RADV is, and, and if you look, this RADV report is from February 2022, okay? So um, you have to understand this about RADV, okay? If there's a data service today, okay, if a patient was seen by a physician today, that record, the health plan has the remainder of this year, all of next year, and until January 31st of 2025, before that diagnosis is considered locked down or final, okay? After, after January 31st, 2025, the health plan can't correct the diagnosis code, can't delete the diagnosis code, can't change the diagnosis code. So, so a data service of today uh, CMS, while it may be used to calculate in the meantime, it doesn't become final until early 2025, okay? And then uh, the way RADV works is it's not like February 1st, they're going to start pulling records and reviewing, you know. Um, so there is a significant lag time between a data service and the possibility that that chart will be involved in a rad v so you must understand that so so we you know and, and a lot of people get hung up because there are some things in risk adjustment where um you know the, the look back period is such that you'll they'll see a date and then they will they will completely shut down and say oh my god this is yeah this is so old i'm not, i'm not why, why, i'm not going to bother with this this is old no, <laughs> no. So and and regardless, there are some some lessons to be learned here. Okay, uh, and which as as I get through this next par this, this first paragraph here, um, you will see it, it. You know, so in some cases, the coding may not necessarily uh, be one for one uh, comparison to ICD ten from ICD nine. But let's look at this. Let's look at the rest of this, and you'll see that it's not necessarily as much a coding issue as it is a uh, a diligence or a proficiency or an accuracy issue. 
So, uh, so Excel is submitted a diagnosis code for uh, diabetes without mention of complication, type 2 uh, or unspecified type, not stated as uncontrolled. CMS used this diagnosis in calculating a risk score. However, the documentation that Excel has provided indicated the patient was treated for left leg cellulitis with rigors, coronary artery disease, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and new right bundle branch block. The documentation did not mention diabetes or indicate the diabetes that had affected the care or treatment or management provided during the encounter. Okay, so regardless of whether that code description is ICD-9 or ICD-10, we could we could eliminate that sentence and we can start at the documentation that Excel has provided indicated the patient was treated for legs, left leg cellulitis, rigors, coronary artery disease, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and new right, right bundle blanch block, and did not in, indicate diabetes. So if we if, if you if you get over that ICD-9 description, it's that 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 is nearly irrelevant because it has nothing to do with the error here. The error is the the condition for which the HCC was assigned was not documented. Okay. Um, and here's another undocumented uh, scenario. Uh, one HCC was unsupported because Excellus did not provide any documentation. Uh, Excellus submitted a diagnosis code for diabetes at renal or peripheral circulatory manifestation. Uh, use the HCC code associated with this. Uh, CMS used that code to uh, calculate the beneficiary's risk score. However, Excellus officials indicated they could not obtain medical records to support the HCC. Okay. And so uh, it, 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 there's uh, there's explanation in, uh, depending on what you have access to, um, you know, um, it, 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 when a chart arrives, when a chart is included in Rad V, okay, the health plan is notified and said, you know, you're you're in, you're, you're being audited, and here's the patient, and here's the HCC we're reviewing, okay, and uh, if a diagnosis was reported that is not supported, okay. I've seen it go both ways, okay? And this is, the, I, you know, I mean, um, this is probably the right thing to do, you know, uh, and, and as opposed to submitting a record that doesn't support the diagnosis, you might as well, the health plan might as well just say, we don't have a record that supports it, okay? Because because I, I, I've i seen them, you know, look, the, that, that, that scenario we looked at, First, the, the documentation didn't mention diabetes, okay? So the health plan has two options when, uh, you know, when they're involved in a RADV for a diagnosis at, you know, when they get to the RADV, they all of a sudden mysteriously don't have support for it. Well, you could submit an irrelevant document that doesn't support it and say, here, here's a documentation that proves that we didn't have support for it. Or you could just say, we don't have any documentation, okay? Um, and so this, and again, this is one of the reasons for that 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 uh, that, that bill introduced in Congress, okay? But um, but how how did this happen, okay? Uh, somewhere, some way, somehow. Okay, and at this, it, it, you know, if we go back to to this time period, this was very likely a coder uh, in a chart review reported the diagnosis of diabetes. Okay, and the health plan relies on medical coders to be good at what they do. <laughs> okay <laughs> and uh and so um you know i mean it, 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 you know a health plan especially when I mean, the big health plans have millions and millions and millions of encounters okay that these coders are going through and so they can't go back you know and look over the shoulder on it they, they rely on the coder to be proficient and accurate and and, and diligent okay um, so, I mean, this is why you need at the point of coding to be the best coder you can be, okay, because uh, it, it it's, has a downstream effect. 
So here's another one, uh, potentially miskeyed diagnoses. An enrollee received multiple diagnoses for a condition, but received only one potentially miskeyed diagnosis for an unrelated condition, which mapped to a possibly unvalidated, HC, unvalidated HCC. Okay, now, again, uh, you know, we're looking at, you know, th th these particular, because there are, th there's, uh, there are no current OIG reports yet that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that talk in the ICD-10 space. Okay, so, so, but, uh, and again, it's, you know, I chose this one because it's not critical. Okay. So for example, ICD-9 diagnosis code 250.00, which maps to an HCC for diabetes without complication, could be transposed as a diagnosis code of 205.00, okay? So on the 10 key, on the calculator keys, right? The coder, instead of doing 250, does 205. And 205 maps to the HCC for metastatic cancer and acute le leukemia, okay? So when we go back to that, that previous entry there, Okay, they didn't have any documentation. Okay, um, here's an a, a, an illustration of how the co metastatic cancer HCC won't have any documentation. The patient didn't have cancer. There was a, a, a there was a keying error. Okay, now in ICD ten. This particular keying error just simply would would, would, would just wouldn't occur because because the, the the ICD-10 codes all start with a letter different just a different format okay but the root cause of the error can can occur just as easily in ICD-10 okay uh, and that is you know a, a lack of uh, of diligence or 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 you know accuracy so. Using an analytical tool that we developed, we identified 811 scenarios in which a diagnosis miskeyed because of data transposition or other data entry errors could have resulted in the as assignment of a. Uh, so this one is really simple, really simple to, you know, it it, it it was a simple mistake and it was a it's a simple thing to identify, but the cost of the error is not simple. It's very significant. So, so the coder keyed in 205 instead of 250. And again, the health plan relies on that coder, right? The, how are they going to go back through millions of records and 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 double check? Of course, we all know that there's QA, you know, and 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 and, this, and, and so this this is it's shocking that this got through QA. Uh, you know, and, you know, and, and maybe this particular, because, you know, not everybody gets 100% QA, you know what I mean? And obviously, even the very best coder could make a keying mistake, right? So, so you know, obviously, you know, the, the, the better your QA scores are, probably the less charts that you're actually going to be QA'd on. And even if you have the highest QA accuracy rate in your company or hierarchy or whatever, you can still make a mistake. So, you know, just ju just trying to point out here uh, some of the very real, and my mouse, I can't, I can't find my cursor. Uh, some of the very real instances, okay? Uh, let's take another look. Uh, let, let, let's take a look at another one. Humana submitted a diagnosis for di diabetes or peripheral circulatory disorders, type two or unspecified type, not a state is uncontrolled. This diagnosis maps to both version twelve uh, HCC for diabetes with renal or peripheral manifestation and version twenty two for di diabetes with chronic complications. Okay, uh, so so model model twelve is is quite historical, right? Um, with chronic complications, both uh, which are more severe manifestations in those related disease groups, that diagnosis was not supported in the medical records. However, there was support for the diagnosis of diabetes without mention of complication, not say it is uncontrolled, okay, which maps to HCCs that were both less severe manifestations. Uh, and uh, accordingly, the enrollees' uh, risk score should, should have been based on the, the less severe manifestation, okay? So again, how did 
uncomplicated diabetes become diabetes with renal uh, or peripheral circulatory. And, and the chart we're going to look at today, uh, you know, deals with this. So, uh, for example, uh, here's another one. Uh, diabetes with peripheral. Uh, is this the same one? Oop, I think I might have uh, included the same. Why can I not get my cursor? Okay. Um, I can't. I, does anybody see my cursor moving? I can't even get my, I can't even find my cursor. Um, so uh, just another, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but uh, just miskey diagnosis, another, another role we receive multiple diagnoses for a condition, but we only receive one. So one of the things I really want to point out to you folks is, okay, um, you know, CMS is really, really experienced and really, really good at data analysis. Okay, and and just like, it, 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 and I'll give you an example. You could walk into a medical practice, and you could. You could say, I can prove whether you have a compliance, uh, you know, compliance vulnerability or not. Okay. And you could say, run, you know, and again, outpatient physician office. You could say, run a report for all the times you've uh, uh, build out the acute CVA code or all the times you build out the acute MI code, right? And if they have any, but but certainly the, the the greater frequency, the greater the problem, you know, because you know the acute MI and acute CVA code would should just never be assigned in the outpatient in the outpatient world, okay. And so, um, if you could walk into a physician's practice and and show them exactly, you know, that that uh, that simply whether they have a uh, an error problem or not, um, you know, CMS has a very long list of those types of, uh, of, of scenarios, okay? Um, and so, uh, again, keying, uh, you know, and so it's not just a matter of being diligent, um, uh, you, you know, from a, um, a, a, uh, Tran, you know, a, 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 an abstracting perspective, your data entry, your data entry has to be, uh, be, you have to be diligent with your data entry as well. Okay. So, uh, let's look at a chart. And bear with me while I pull it up. Yeah. So, here is our chart for today. Benny factor. Uh, date of birth, 4173, male. Date of visit, hey, today. <laughs> History of present illness, patient presents today for a follow-up to address, uh, visit, address uh, several ongoing health concerns. Patient has a history of uncontrolled diabetes, hyperlipidemia, arthritis, and cellulitis of the left lower leg. Review of systems, patient continues, uh, continue, reports continued elevated uh, blood glucose levels, uh, joint pain related to arthritis, tenderness, redness, and well swelling of the left lower leg due to cellulitis, okay? Um, past medical history, uncontrolled diabetes, hyperlipidemia, arthritis, cellulitis of the left lower leg, okay? Um, and uh, so, by the way, uh, this chart was generated by AI. Okay, I, I, I and and you know what? I, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that real quick, just because this is really important uh, for uh, people to understand moving forward. Okay, you should start becoming aware of AI. Um, so let me just show you. All right, I can say. Um, and, and I'm actually going to use the same prompt that, uh, I did up here, except I'll just change. Let's 
So I asked it to write a chart, uh, write a, a medical office note for a uh, pay, visit with a patient for the follow-up of AFib, okay? And well, it's doing it, okay? And it's even assigned in the codes, okay? Um, there's gonna be a, uh, uh, we're gonna be doing something on AI where we're gonna be talking to some AI developers and stuff like that. But, but so, so I wanted to show you, um, you know, this is not Google, <laughs> okay? This is not like search for, um, you know, spare tire for Toyota Camry, okay? Uh, where it goes and searches for a keyword. This is generative, uh, this is generative, uh, you know, AI. So um, so my point in uh, d just real quickly demonstrating that was that uh, my, uh, my record here, I uh, adapted it. Um, I meant to come back and put some medications in here and I did. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm outing myself, but, uh, but, you know, I, I meant to put medications in here. Uh, not, it's not going to change. Um, I would have put an antihypertensive medication. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, anti, uh, I would have put a statin in here. I would have put maybe some NSAIDs or the arthritis. Uh, I would just, you know, just put a, a diabetic medication in here, but it's not going to change the point of today's note. Okay. No non-drug allergy, allergies. We got uh, vital signs. Okay. Exam joint reveals tenderness and limited range of motion due to arthritis. Assessment of left lower leg shows signs of cellulitis, including uh, erythema, uh, warmth, and edema. Okay. And then we have the assessment, uncontrolled diabetes, continue to address elevated blood glucose levels, hyperlipidemia, monitor lipid levels, and adjust treatment as needed. Uh, arthritis, manage joint pain and uh, explore appropriate interventions and cellulitis of the left leg, initiate an, initiate antibiotic treatment and, and closely monitor the infection, okay? And then it just, uh, you know, has a plan for, um, you know, for for these things. And it was electric signed, electronically signed by Frank Einstein, MD, okay? So uh, does anybody have anything... Um, how would you, uh, you know, and you can type in the chat. I have everybody muted. Uh, I'm actually going to, um, uh, I'm actually going to make it so that you can speak. You, you can unmute and, and speak if you wish, or you can type in a chat. Um, what, uh, how, uh, how would you uh, approach this note? How, what, uh, what do you see uh, as, um, uh, from a risk adjustment perspective? Let, let's say. Uh, what do you see as uh, options uh, or, you know, codes that, that would indicate one HCC or another? Anybody? Hey, Doug. Hey. Hey, it's Angelique. So I was just looking at a couple, um, and I don't know, um, one I see the E11628 would be the type duty with the other skin complication because it says the lower leg. Um, but I know generally with a diabetic foot, you foot you will find those type of complications. You so walked mentioned... right into my trap. You walked right into my trap. I did? I, I, oh, I'm gosh. Glad, I'm glad you did. You know what I mean? Because here's, I'm glad you did. Okay, because we're going to cover that. Okay. 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 And, and if you didn't do it, I would have said, well, some coders might do this. And 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 it would have been me offering that a coder might do that. You know what I mean? Okay. So I'm very glad, and, and, you know, so I'm very, because you are going to learn something here. That Absolutely. Will be useful. That's why I'm That's here. Your, if that was your thought process, you're going to learn something about how that may be a flawed progress uh, process. And so great. And, 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 and you saved, you know, you saved me from being, you know, the, the, you know, offering the problem and the solution, you know what I mean? So, so thank you for that. So, um, and, okay, and well, that was just one code. Maybe check the other one because I did the E1169 for the hyperlipidemia. Can you roll up a little bit? That's, that's another one. That's another one. That, uh, okay. So, okay. So what, good. what would you say? Okay. If I were to tell you, if I were to tell you, unfortunately, both of those would be incorrect. Okay. What would you know? If I say that's incorrect, could you could you hypothesize why they're incorrect? Um. Two words. I don't. Okay, I don't know. Is because of the uncontrolled status or? Nope. 
Nope. Uh, Causal relationship. Go ahead. Okay. Did you say? And it's hyperlipidemia. This one goes. I've been in, I've been in risk adjustment since risk adjustment began, and this this is a, a conversation that comes up all the time. Okay? okay. And so, and and it'll be if we talk about this, it's gonna be easier to understand that the the the, uh, the other. Okay. Okay. Um, I am. Uh, so so you know, forget me. My brothers, because uh, uh, I'm I'm six foot two. 320 pounds. Okay. I'm yeah. hefty. I'm hefty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My two brothers, I swear to God, if they turn sideways, it's hard to see them. They're like sheets of paper. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but all of us have, uh, have lipids that are just ringing the bell because we eat, you know, we've never met a fat we didn't like. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And so, um, you know, and, and so people always want to do this. They always want to, they always want to attach hyperlipidemia as a, uh, as an other associated, uh, diabetic, um, thing. Okay. Okay. But okay. I, I, but I, I have in, in 33 years, okay. Not just the 20 years I've been HCC coding, but 33 years in, in coding, I have never seen a physician indicate that a patient had hyperlipidemia due to diabetes. Okay, I mean, it, 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 it would be impossible because hyperlipidemia is such a common, uh, common condition that has so many different causes, and rarely, you know, to, to have a causal relationship, you'd have to say, if it weren't for diabetes, this patient wouldn't have hyperlipidemia. Right. And, you know, or the hyper, the, the, the diabetes caused the hyperlipidemia. And clinically, no doctor is going to ever, ever say that. Okay. So, so that having said, does that make sense so far? Yeah, it makes sense. I, yeah, it makes sense. Um, I, let me tell you something. I debated this and I probably, um, when I was at, well, the A word and back and forth the same thing. And they, uh, again, I forgot what some of the things they said so it just and I and I've read it and I had to keep going back read like I'm talking to you now and it says other specified complication but because that my thing was saying it didn't say due to or with so can, explain that part uh, I, I will because, because we're going to look at a coding clinic and 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 and, and that's going to we're going to make that crystal clear but okay but, uh, okay just touch on something else that Okay, that that is a is very problematic. And remember, I showed you that that PDF uh, where it says, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Medicare Advantage plans, uh, you know, leveraged, you know, this type of thing. So the other problem is, um, is uh, when you are in a certain organization, you get yeah. policies and procedures and guidelines from that organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they may not always be righteous. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, so there's, and and th so you may be, you know, like I don't know, five years ago, before you worked for that company, you may not have been inclined to do this, but you go to work for them, and all of a sudden, you know, uh, and, and I'm not saying your company, I'm saying any company, you know. I understand work, and exactly how that went. Company, yeah. And all of a sudden, they hand you the playbook, and they say, "These, this is our playbook. Abide by it," and you get conditioned to do something you know a certain way you know what i mean right, so right. um so causal relationship is incredibly important to assigning a code um you know combination code you know and so and we'll look at this so so i'm glad and i'm i, I think i think you actually started with, no you started with the uh the skin condition but then you also went to the hyperlipidemia but it's it's right. easier to start at the hyperlipidemia and explain that because if you can get that then you know because cellulitis okay there's plenty of people that don't have diabetes that get cellulitis. cellulitis right right okay yeah so you know and and that's where in guidelines there is what's called a presumed causal relationship right for right. some things okay but not everything has a presumed causal relationship you know so and so that's where understanding this whole 
this whole thing about causal relationship and and reading the guy, you know, following the guidelines. And of course, now we uh, we've also layered on top of that that if your organization tells you to do something a certain way, okay, um, you you know, your boss has given you a directive. You got to follow the directive now. Um, without, uh, I want to leave it there because I can say I, I I can follow that point a little further, but I, I just leave it right there for now. So okay. your company, your organization tells you do this, okay? So what are you going to do? I mean, you're going to do this the way they tell you to do it because you're covered, okay? I mean, unless you, I guess I am going to go down this road. Unless you want to, you know, formally, uh, you know, contest that. In, a, in in the compliance realm, you know, and you, you go to the, go to the compliance department and 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 go to battle there. Okay, you are following instructions that I hope are in writing, so that ever came back to you, you know, you you, you wouldn't you, you wouldn't be rogue. You know what I mean? You well, you I'm, were doing what you were told to do. Does that make sense? It makes lots of sense. Okay. Been there, so. yeah. So, uh, in the essence of time, I've because I, I, I always make my uh, presentations, um, you know, uh, longer, you, you know, be, because you know the you, you, you know, we're scheduled for an hour, and if there's no participation, then there's 15, 20 minutes that I got to fill. You right? So, um, so, so we are going to skip ahead in in the presentation. Um, which will be in the system in its entirety. The other is just more dis general descriptions of hyper uh, uh, of, of uh, diabetes, et cetera. But but this is exactly what I wanted to get to, and so I thank you for you know um, I thank you I thank you for articulating your thoughts because it, the other thing I wanted to say is if you have that thought and whether that thought it, it, it was synthesized by you or whether it was uh conditioned into you okay if you have that i i guarantee you're not the only coder on the planet who has that thought <laughs> you know what i mean so right, so right. Uh, so so again angelique thank you so much for bringing you're that up because again if 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 i had said it i was uh, then i was suggesting it or you know almost like well, I could have making up been making up a you know a thought process that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? So so I'm really yeah. glad to hear you 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 say that. So uh so let's go take a look um at bear with me. Let's get, get back to the presentation. And I am going just to 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 just so you can see uh uh, uh I am gonna kind of fast forward, but I am gonna go through the slides here. And Jesse, you can see that, um, you know, this is some other information that can be, you know, you can pull the PDF. Uh, yeah, it, the rest of this is pretty much the guidelines, you know, there's okay. even reviewing the official guidelines, the coding and reporting. But but what you and I are discussing here uh, is actually covered by coding clinic, which is another pain point for a lot of people. Okay. Um, you know, it's amazing how many people, it, it, you know, I, I say coding clinic to them and, and they're like, oh, is that a, is that a, a, a upcoming workshop? Or, you know, uh, like, you know, the answers are crazy, you know, or, or okay, uh, uh, the answers are many, I should say. So, uh, so, um, this is a coding clinic from 2017. It has to do with, uh, control. That's why I put controlled or uncontrolled in that note, you know? Not necessarily for the code descriptor from ICD-9, okay, um, ex, you know, but how do we deal with the, if, if, if controlled or uncontrolled is not in the code descriptor anymore, you know, how do we deal with that? Well, it's, uh, it, it, you know, Coding Clinic has given us the, um, the necessary tools to deal with that. Okay. okay. So here is a coding clinic that, uh, so I want to get to, uh, you know, and it's funny because, you know, when I do a presentation, you know, when I've created a presentation, and this is what I love about chart review is it is, it, you know, it is participatory. And so um, I have several different slides. You brought up an issue that is on one of my slides, and we can go to that because that's the one that, you know, that came up. And, and, okay. and you know, so, uh, so, um, 
I want to, I want, I do want to point out the with. Okay. Okay. The subterm with, and, and, and if you notice, if you, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to flip back to the record, but because uh, I read it, uh, I read it out loud. We looked at it. And I don't think anywhere in that record is the term with. <laughs> yeah, is, yeah, you're right. I didn't see it. Okay. okay. I didn't see it. Yeah. And so uh, the subterm with in the index should be interpreted, interpreted as, as a link between diabetes and any of these conditions under the word with. Okay. Okay. Now, now also, so the record that we looked at didn't say with. Okay. Right. But. Right. But this is not talking about, it doesn't say anything about the documentation. It says the subterm with in the index should be interpreted as a link between diabetes and any of those conditions indented under the word with. Now, um, and 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 we're gonna get some clarification on this. So, so uh and and that's where you kind of that's where we started with your comment. Okay. You said other. You know, I think you said skin, skin, uh, skin, skin, um, skin conditions not elsewhere classified or not otherwise, you know, or um, with 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 skin conditions. Yeah, that's what it said. The right. Six two. Yeah, yeah. Right, but it okay. doesn't. That doesn't mean every skin condition. You know what I mean? Right. So okay. Okay. Um, so, so that's where you know, just just refining our understanding and referring to coding coding. You know, that's why coding clinic exists. Is Look, ICD-10 is incredibly detailed. You know, ICD has been around for 50 years, you know, longer, you know. And so it's pretty good. But there's always going to be questions that come up. And that's what coding clinic is for, is to answer those questions that come up consistently, you know. So um, so uh, the physician, doc physician documentation does not need to provide a link. Remember I said the word with wasn't there? Right. The documentation does not need to provide a link between the diagnosis of diabetes and chronic kidney disease to accurately assign E1122 type 2 diabetes with uh, chronic kidney disease. This link can be assumed since chronic kidney disease is listed under the subterm with. Okay. Right. Right. Now, so if we see diabetes, we see chronic kidney disease, guidelines tell us that we can assume that causal relationship. Okay. But this is the difference, and as I, you know, I'll just re restate it, um, it doesn't mean, it, because chronic kidney disease is a very specific condition, okay? It doesn't mean skin conditions, that every other skin condition is going to be caused by, uh, you know, I mean, patient can have a rash. A, a diabetic patient could have a rash. It could have been caused because they ate nuts and they're allergic to nuts. That has nothing to do with diabetes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so, so you have to be very careful, and and you have to read these. You know, you have to read the guidelines black and white. Okay, um, and it, then if you read them black and white, and you have a question. Submit a question to coding clinic and get clarification. You know what I mean? So um, so these conditions should be coded as related, even in the absence of provider documentation explicitly linking them, unless the documentation clearly states they're not related. Okay. For conditions not specifically linked by these relational terms in the classification, provider documentation must link the conditions, right? So okay. so this goes back to chronic kidney disease is specific. Okay. Right. Right. Um you know, so if it's not specifically linked, then the the provider must do it. Okay, and so um, I I also you know what let's uh, let's uh, so that I'm not um let's uh let's go to your your question here. So and this was specifically addressed in uh, Coding Clinic 2017, Volume Four, Issue Four. A patient with type 2 diabetes presented due to acute cellulitis of the left lower leg when assigning a diabetes code, would it be appropriate to report the code for diabetes with skin complications, NEC? What is the appropriate code assignment for cellulitis in a patient with type 2 diabetes? Okay. And okay. so here, this is going to repeat what we just talked about. Ah. In order to link diabetes and the cellulitis, the provider would need to document cellulitis as a diabetic skin complication. Diabetes with skin complication, NEC, is indexed, but diabetes with cellulitis is not specifically indexed. So again, right, right. I, diabetes with chronic kidney disease, specific. Di if, 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 if it said diabetes with cellulitis, I would be specific. Diabetes with skin complication, NEC, is not, you know, 
if, if we followed that, if, if we were to follow that line of thinking, then, geez, a hangnail would be, <laughs> would be a diabetic complication, right? So, um, so really important to understand in regard, in answering that question is the with guideline does not apply to not elsewhere classifiable or not elsewhere classified uh, index entries that cover a broad, broad categories of conditions. Specific conditions must be linked by the terms with, due to, or associated with. Okay. So I think that this answers your, it should answer your question that it does. we didn't see with in the, in the note, we didn't see or due, to. Uh, yeah. due to or associated with or caused right. by or anything. Okay. And so the, the sniff test, if you will, is again, in the index, chronic kidney disease is a very specific condition. And, and if, if, if it's, Diabetes with and their subterm chronic kidney disease. Bang, guidelines say we it, 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 it's a presumed causal relationship. Um, but NEC is not the same thing. Okay, because it covers such a broad range of categories. Okay, okay. so now here is the here is the issue. Okay, and I, and I think you're not at that organization anymore but but when you were at that organization they would have had you it, it sounded to me like you said they would have had you code the cellulitis as a uh as as associated with diabetes is that is, yeah, is that, that they would have yeah and that yeah. was and see and the thing was again you know i've i've had the the formal training to understand like again the with whatever and such but they uh at that particular you know they were like any context and that's why probably you know dog whatever but here, did, so but... here's the thing when if their charts get uh involved in oh in a rad v audit and they fail the rad v audit yeah okay. well you know it was a big thing wait 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 wait, 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 wait. let me finish <laughs> my sentence okay okay if they fail the rad v audit they fail the at rad v audit you are not going to be held responsible for that you know what i mean so so uh, you know i just you know, when when you when these you know every big Medicare Advantage plan has been sued by the Department of Justice for uh you know overpayments for 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 a myriad of reasons similar to this you know and others, but I just want you to understand and 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 I always say I will never get between an employer and an employee. I always say follow your organizational instructions. Absolutely, I got you. But, but I've been around but, you long enough. <laughs> But you need, you know, and, and and you do have two choices: just roll with the punches, or if you feel very strongly like something is really going on, then you always have the uh, the the chain of command in the compliance, uh, you know, realm to 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 follow up. You know what I mean? But you will not be, you know, you in this instance, you would not. It would not come down to you. You know what I mean? Because you were following your organizational instructions, et cetera, et cetera. But um, the other part that I always tell people is, okay, so what happens when you leave that organization and you've been conditioned to do something a certain way that may be, you know, bending things a little bit? You want to be able to be uh, pliable enough to go back to <laughs> the, the, the the straight and narrow. You know what I mean? So, so I'm sorry, exactly. I just wanted to finish that thought. And you were trying to say yeah. something. No, I was just saying, um, yeah, I was just kind of co-signing what you were saying, agreeing that, yeah, we, yeah, it, it led all the way to that. But here's the thing, even in our our department where it it, it should have been verified, they were accepting it and suggesting it was correct because I had, you know, I made made the the fight. I'm like, hey, this is this doesn't make sense, you know. What I mean, and initially, so when I saw that, of course, you know, part of it, and I just had to follow the, you know, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 here's the thing. Okay. I don't think you could find any organization in the risk adjustment space. Okay. I just don't think you could find an organization where a coder is not faced with a dilemma, uh, a gap between what they understand official coding guidelines to be, uh, Medicare risk adjustment guidelines to be, and 
the organization's policies and procedures, you know, and, and some of them yeah. may be maybe very subtle and minor, et cetera, but every organization has their internal policies and procedures and guidelines that they give their coders. Okay. And again, I've been involved in this since day one. I've worked in, right. I, I can't tell you how many. And so yeah. it, I couldn't point the finger and say organization A does this no other organization it happens in every organization and it's it's not necessarily untoward you know um you know sometimes the road to heck is uh paved with good intentions right so so it, it, you know it, it's not to say that when a, a organization has policies and procedures or coding guidelines that they give their coders that it's for some surreptitious or uh nefarious purpose you know yeah um, yeah it could be that some decision maker uh, either didn't fully understand, you know, uh, or, you know, whatever. So, so it's yeah. not, it's not, you know. But, but the thing is, the, the the coder is, you know, when you, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. You, you know, when when you work for an organization, you you, it's kind of implied that you're going to follow your their instructions, you know. And so, um, you know, and I think I I I, I bet you if we went through every single medicare advantage plan um i bet you we could find in any organization an instruction that could be clarified better could be re reviewed whatever um sure. so it's not it's not a single organization it's, right, you know right. um so you know but but knowledge is power and and Absolutely. again you know, if you if you work for, uh, you know, you, you, you're in a place two, three, four, five years and you go somewhere else, you got to you got to shed that skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? you, yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. uh, I, I do want to just before we before we go, I, I included the arthritis and it, it really does come down to the same thing. OK, uh, because people want, are inclined to uh, go to diabetes of arthropathy. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so. So that was the the point of today, and we're going to be doing a lot in diabetes. This is not a one and done, uh, you know, uh, session here. We're going to be talking about diabetes because there's so much, you know, it's, it's such a big classification, such a, a common classification, yeah. and there's just so many, so many different branches on the tree. Uh, we will be we, we'll, we'll be doing a lot in diabetes, just as we will neoplasms and other other categories that that you know that do have a lot of branches on the tree. But arthropathy, you know, now that we've gone through that, you know, arthropathy, you can follow the same, you know, it's the same dilemma, you know, or the same, uh, same pain point or same, uh, same pitfall, you know, so, um, you know, and, and again, this is, this is where, you know, you said that even at the time, you kind of, you kind of had an issue with it, right? Right, um, yeah. You know, but, and then. You know, but you were told you patted on the head and told it's okay, <laughs> Basically, yeah. right? And so, so and and you know and um you know they they if you hear something enough times or you're told to do something enough times, then it becomes habit. You know what I mean? So yes. that is that is and 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 this is it's just it's just the way risk adjustment HCC coding is is. Again, it's not, I'm not, this is not a, you know, uh, this is not a, a statement about any organization or all organizations doing something necessarily wrong. It's, you know, you know, it, it's, you know, when you enter into the gray area, you're in the gray area and somebody's got to make a decision and somebody makes a decision. And so for a particular coding scenario uh, in each organization, the policymaker makes a decision that could go one way or the other, you know what I mean? And so uh, that's what I wanted to highlight today, you know, and, and th again, thank you. Um, so I, I did want to close with, from a coding perspective, it is a causal relationship. Uh, and, um, you know, because in, in, in patients with diabetes, any foot infection is potentially serious. OK, so one of the things that we, we do as coders is, you know, I think, you know, most most of us know that, you know, diabetic foot ulcers, you know, uh, unfortunately, many times result in an amputation. And that's very serious. Right. Was, so we have the seriousness of the of condition in our mind. But that is not what should be guiding our coding selection, 
Okay. Right. Because, yeah. because, I mean, you read diabetic foot, foot ulcer, many of us cringe and say, oh, God, that poor patient, uh, they're headed, they're, they could be headed for trouble. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. But but that's that's emotional. But it's not it's not you know from a coding perspective, it's the causal relationship, not the severity, not the risk. You know, um, you know it's the guidelines. And so so you know just keep that in mind. Um, right. And and again, I I, I want to thank you. For, and and by the way, here are some other uh, NECs uh, that you know kind of a, a quick cheat cheat list. Uh, you know, ophthalmologic. You know. Um, a renal NEC, you know, so, so, you know, the, the, um, um, presentation will be in the system. So you can, you, you know, you can pull okay. that, yeah. pull it down and, say, and, yeah. and it's a good, good, real quick list at, at, at some, you know, pitfalls of the NEC ca classification. Okay. And, uh, and again, uh, Angelique, thank you for, you know, again, I, I like, uh oftentimes i do these and although i welcome participation oftentimes people are inhibited so i really appreciate you i mean that was so timely and so right on you 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 hit the bullseye with bringing up uh exactly what what you brought up and coming from a participant versus me suggesting it makes it completely different so so thank you um well yeah you're welcome doug and i thank you really um, I try to set my time. I missed you last. I'm going to look at the replay last week, but this is so informational and helpful. I don't know how often you get a chance to hear that. And I do appreciate, you know, I've been in your arena a long time and I know how you like to, I mean, the efficiency of information that you supply is like very good. I mean, it's amazing. So I appreciate it. And I'm glad that I did ask because again, it was a question. And when I saw diabetes, I'm like, I don't care what I got to do. I got to make time um for one o'clock today and i like i know i can go back on demand which i do um but i like the live presentation so again thank you thank you thank you and i love the i love the live participation and and so and, and so let me tell you i mean there's a lot of reasons i do that first of all i just i love sharing knowledge as i did like but um you know one of the things i tell people is i have stubbed my toe I so, want to keep you from stubbing your toe because it hurts. Right, right. It hurt. <laughs> you know yeah, it does so, hurt. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so that, that's you know, if I can, you know, if there, if we get, you know, and and it's all for everybody wants to be, everybody wants to be as good as they can be. You know what yes, I mean? Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. Um, if you Fishing do that in a vacuum, effective. yes. If you do yes. that in a vacuum, then you're only relying on yourself to better yourself. You know, right. and we can all better ourselves through conversation through you know you know through uh you know uh discussion and dialogue and and you know um and learning from other people's mistakes or other scenarios that have come up other than just those that hit your radar you know what i mean so um so so again thank you very 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 very, much, very much. and well. uh and so hopefully we'll see you in the next session okay? oh yeah absolutely have a great one okay thanks thanks everybody all right all right bye-bye